Let's talk about the latest in Ukraine, because just a few moments ago, right before we started, the, U the Russian army has launched a massive barrage of weapons attacks into central Ukraine. Of course, most of the country is already in darkness. Uh, it appears things are starting to heat up overnight. Here are here is the air raid sirens and attacks just uh, a few minutes ago before our show started. Listen, this is caught on the security camera. You can hear the air raids in the background. Um, and so, you know, this is in central Ukraine, and again, attacks happening in different locations. Now, there are there are reports at this hour too that the Russian army preparing for the larger invasion, the larger attack, um, still waiting for the ground to freeze before that unfolds, before that happens. And there's continued shelling that's been happening into Russian territory. Patrick Lancaster has been doing some great reporting on that. Um, really horrific bombings that have been taking place across the border. So this is about to get worse before it gets better. And there doesn't seem to be any discussion about peace. <laughs> like there, we've already, that ship has already sailed. Uh, from Washington. So a couple of big updates on the NATO-led war in Ukraine that we want to bring you. First, let's start with Al-Qaeda. Some major news tonight. Of course, we've been covering the fact that Al-Qaeda and ISIS terrorists are now being recruited by NATO and Ukrainian government to come fight in Ukraine. If this is a new story to you, like raise your hand if this is new, new information to you. Like you're going to say, wait a second, what? Al-Qaeda and ISIS are now fighting in Ukraine, being recruited by NATO and Ukrainian forces to fight. Yeah, that's happening. We've covered it. It's well documented now. Uh, they're being paid thousands of dollars per month as a stipend uh, from your tax dollars to do this, by the way. Who do you think's paying for this? This is a NATO funded, this is a US funded, NATO funded slush fund that's being able to divvy this money out. It's coming right from your tax dollars. So if you can't pay your energy bill this month, be heartened to know that your money is going to this. We told you this two weeks ago. We covered it on the show. In fact, we featured one of the Al-Qaeda soldiers who was t uh, talking on camera about how much money he was being paid. Um, and uh, and we, we showed you that guy. Yes. He talked yeah. about where he had come from, how he got there, who his... Uh, who funders his, were. Who his funders were and who his... I don't want to use the word co-workers. What's the co-workers. Word? Uh, <laughs> it's like I clocked in today at Al Qaeda. Where do you Where do you work? Oh, I work at Al Qaeda headquarters. <laughs> great benefits yeah. there. They have a great lunchroom. You get forty room. virgins when you bomb yourself. <laughs> <laughs> a great lunchroom. They have all sorts of perks. I wonder if they get they uh, they get two weeks off at Al Qaeda. Um, when you come work for Al Qaeda, you get two weeks off and benefits. Um, so we just got word this afternoon from an Iraqi newspaper. This is amazing. We're actually getting news from Iraqi journalists, Iraqi newspapers. So this is an Iraqi newspaper on the number of terrorists who are now leaving Syria, heading into Ukraine, and they will be paid for with your tax dollars. Um, the Iraq edition of Al Alarm, uh, Al Alarm reports that dozens of Al Qaeda linked militants have left for Ukraine from the Syrian province of Idlib to participate in hostilities against Russia. Here's the paper. Um, the newspaper says the number of terrorists who've left Idlib for Ukraine over the past two weeks is estimated at more than 70 terrorists, including Al-Qaeda leaders such as Abdul Hakim al-Sashimi. Uh, many of these groups might sound familiar to you um, in Syria and Libya because the United States funded these groups and met with these groups, shook hands with these groups and these leaders. Here is Senator John McCain and Senator Lindsey Graham shaking hands with Al-Qaeda leader Abdel Hakim giving him a nice prize for help, for his part in helping to uh, destroy Libya. Like, here's what you get. Thank you, Mr. Al-Qaeda, for helping to destroy Libya. Here is Senator McCain when he went to Syria in 2013 to meet with ISIS and Al-Qaeda fighters there. Take a look at this. Republican Senator McCain in his secret trip to Syria in 2013 to meet with freedom fighters. Former Al-Qaeda operative Abu Mosa, now an ISIS press officer. So he moved up, you know, he moved from Al-Qaeda he got promoted. Mm -hmm. He's now handling public relations for ISIS. Um, ISIS Caliph Abdu Bakar al Baghdadi trained with Israeli with America uh, with Israel with American tax dollars. So that's good. Your tax dollars went to train him up. Um, Mohammed Noor suspect in the kidnapping of three hostages shown in ISIS videos. Awful ISIS videos, by the way. So that's who uh, the American Senate is hanging out with. All these good guys. So this funding has never stopped. You know, anyone who's been following the story knows that United States has been funding Al-Qaeda for years. 
We started many, many years ago, of course, in the late 1970s under Jimmy Carter, and it continued under, under Reagan. So this funding has never stopped. The U.S. continues to use al-Qaeda in Syria and other countries. And but now at least, more of them. I mean, you know, according to this, this graphic, they are trained, this one in the middle, trained in Israel with American tax dollars, uh, whereas most of the reports we're getting out of the Ukrainian army is that they are untrained. Uh, most of their trained forces were wiped out early in the conflict um, in the spring. So that is a and good so silver lining, yeah. who do they have left are, you know, <laughs> untrained civilians. So if they need to pull in some guys who know what they're doing, well, you know. That's we why I love my, my I love my wife. She always tries to find the silver lining. Um, I'm I'm being slightly facetious, but okay. I do think it's a it is a point. It is a point. They have no they have a very low amount of of skilled fighters left. No, and that is true. Like we covered last week or two weeks ago, these fighters coming from Syria are hardened fighters. They've been. Yeah. Paid, paid for by the United States. I'm not advocating at all. I'm just saying. No, I know. I know you're being funny, but they're they're they are hardened fighters. They're veterans, and they're fighting against uh, the you know Bashar al Assad uh, Assad government. Mm -hmm. So these are hardened American trained fighters. Yes. Now we've been funding Al Qaeda and ISIS. Um, so they're teaming up now. They're teaming up with NATO and Ukraine. So welcome to the battlefield. Um, unbelievable. And are they doing this just because they believe in democracy, or are they getting paid very well? <laughs> First of all, they don't believe in democracy. Remember George W. Bush <laughs> said they, they hate our freedoms. They hate our freedoms. They hate so, our freedoms. So then we're just paying them but very they like well. Our, they like our money. Well, yeah. again, we're, we shouldn't tell them what they think or feel, but the, it seems the reporting is that the funding continues. Right. Thousands of dollars a month. So I'm going to go with money. I'm going to go with that they like money. Uh, now to the dirty nuclear bomb story. An update there. Russia this afternoon... Uh, according to the Russian ambassador to the United States, and I saw this earlier today, a bunch of people commented on a video, said Russia has repeatedly said, Vladimir Putin has repeatedly said, we have zero intention of using a nuclear bomb. And yes. today, the Russian ambassador to the United States says Russia did not intend and does not plan to use nuclear weapons in Ukraine. There you go. So all of this bluster about a nuclear bomb being pushed, a uh, dirty bomb being placed in Ukraine at the hands of the Amer uh, the hands of Russians, they say is garbage. Today, Russian uh, Russia formally met with the United Nations. Now this meeting happened this afternoon. It happened behind closed doors. The 15 member body they went behind closed doors to talk about it, and Russia went there to present their evidence to the United Nations um, and tell them they found a dirty bomb in Ukraine. Uh, they say that Ukraine and NATO are about to use this dirty bomb in order to label Russia as nuclear terrorists. Um, and then also, it would also give NATO full-scale justification to attack Russia inside of Ukraine, even though they're doing that already and they're attacking. <laughs> so I'm like, but this is like, now you're officially going to attack us. Um, so they did in front of the UN today, raise that accusation. Um, and of course, the West slammed them, said, no, that's not true. That's not happening. Uh, okay. Yes. In fact, uh, Lloyd Austin, the Secretary of Defense, came out and said, we put no credibility in that. Uh, we're, we're, we're not even listening. Basically, the, the Russia has warned France, the UK, uh, the US, the European Union about this dirty bomb tactic. And basically, the full Western response was this. We don't hear that. <laughs> like, I don't, are you saying something? Because I don't hear it. This is like how my children talk to each other when they're trying to keep being annoying. I mean, it's like, I don't know. I think it was smart of them to come out in front on this. Like, let us know what you think about this in the chat. But I think it was smart for them to come out in front and say, here's what we've discovered. We think that this is a false flag operation. Here is the location of it. Why don't you go investigate International Atomic Energy Agency? Now, the IAEA doesn't really have any intention of going and looking. What they're going to do, though, is continue to look at other nuclear power plants. Yes, uh, we had a super chat that mentioned the location of it just a minute ago. David, can you look at that super chat? It's it's long gone. The location that they're saying this bomb was. Uh, All right, we'll get anyway, to that. Yeah. Ahead. So former, and then meanwhile, former General David Petraeus uh, wants the United States to invade. If we, like, just like we did in Iraq. So David Petraeus wants us to lead a multinational force that does not include NATO but is a nation of willing participants. Okay, did you hear that? So General David Petraeus, who f you know failed in Afghanistan, right, uh, wants the United States to invade just like we did in Iraq, but without NATO. He wants to create a international force. 
Uh, Colonel Douglas McGregor this afternoon wrote an interesting piece this afternoon about Petraeus and says the whole thing seems really fishy. Here's Douglas McGregor's piece this afternoon. He says, according to Petraeus, the military actions he advocates would not be a NATO intervention, but a multinational force led by the U.S. and not as a NATO force. In other words, a U.S.-led multinational force on the Iraq model composed of conventional ground, air, and naval forces. Petraeus does not explain why U.S. military action is needed, but it's not hard to guess. The intervention is designed to rescue Ukrainian forces from defeat and presumably compel Moscow to negotiate on Washington's terms, whatever those terms might be. Admittedly, he says, the whole business seems weird. But Petraeus's suggestion should not be dismissed, not because Petraeus's military expertise warrants consideration, it doesn't. Rather, it merits attention because Petraeus would never make such a recommendation unless he was urged to do so by powerful figures in Washington and on Wall Street. Yes. And as Jeffrey Sachs tells Americans, globalists and neocon elites clearly want a direct armed confrontation with Russia. So what he's saying is that the intelligence deep state who's put Petraeus out there over the past few weeks, he's suddenly been doing television appearances, is getting his marching orders directly from the intelligence state inside of Washington, right from the CIA and Pentagon and marching those orders right to the public. It's interesting that he has a, a good name to do these kind of things when it was not that long ago that we pulled out of Afghanistan and that was a shambles. And most of us scratched our head about why were we there in the first place? What was that all for? All of these lives ruined, American and Afghani. And then now we feel like it, inspired by General Petraeus. Right, like because we have such a short memory. Right. We see this sort of um, normalizing of old coots. Right. We like suddenly George W. Bush is now he's like the fun old president who paints dogs. Right. And he's doing master classes on how to be a good leader. And we're like, oh, George W. Bush wasn't so bad. Like, are you have you lost your mind? Like, oh, yeah. Uh, you know, Dick Cheney. Remember a few months ago, Dick Cheney with his his daughter running for reelection um, and uh, and. Democrats were all over like, well, Dick Cheney says that Trump's Trump's crazy. Yeah. We're listening to Dick Cheney now. Dick Cheney. <laughs> he has a like he has a Darth Vader heart inside of him. Like, are you kidding me? We're listening to Dick Cheney, warmonger Dick Cheney. We have such a short. And, and Natalie, I tried to answer you earlier. Um, Pat Cat said, can you show on a map where exactly the alleged dirty bomb is located? I will give you a hint. Make a lave. OK. Colave. Yeah, and I saw a few in the chat saying this city as well, too. So we'll look into that. Thank you so much. So something interesting else, something else happened today in Ukraine. Um, a couple of big pieces I just wanted to cover today. German leaders were in Ukraine today. And boy, did they put on a show for them. So the Germans will, so all in an effort to get the Germans to continue to send them weapons, which they've been reticent about. Um, they've been pulling back because of the energy crisis and inflation. And also the story they're not reporting is that they're running out of steel. They don't have steel processing and you need steel to make those leopard tanks. And guess what? They don't have it. So Germans don't have it. They can't send it to another country. They don't even have it for their own country right now. So Ukraine, they have, the Germans were in town Okay, the president was in town. German President Steinmeier was there and Ukraine then sets off a fake air raid siren. Now, according to multiple reports, there was no reason for the siren to go off. There was no attacks. The whole reason they did it was so they could send the Germans, the German president into the underground bunker for two hours while they did this little charade. So take a look at this. The Ukrainians shoved the German president Steinmeier into a bomb shelter for two hours today after they staged a fake air raid. He should be thankful Bono wasn't there as well. <laughs> Isn't that amazing, right. though? They would have forced him to listen to their music. <laughs> yeah, here's my new, here's my new record. Um, isn't that hilarious though? Like it's all a charade. Like here's what we'll do. We'll make we'll make them really. We're gonna we're gonna keep them down there until they agree to send us more weapons. And we also want them to really believe that we're under attack right this moment. So it's a way of saying, oh, you're not going to send us weapons? Well, then we'll barricade you in the basement for two hours until you reconsider your position. Uh, again, John Poetry, I was right. War is theater. Mm -hmm. Okay. The biggest theater of all. Uh, and the biggest theater of all is perhaps what's going on with the Nord Stream Pipeline. So Nord Stream Pipeline update now, because the New York Times this morning, the shitty New York Times, out with this piece 
three inquiries, but no answers to who blew holes in Nord Stream pipeline. Now, they say, and I was going to go through this piece because it's it's really fascinating. And what they're basically saying is with these three, um, oh my God, I'm log in here. These three inquiries, um, they do not have an answer yet. So all of these countries are actively looking at this different data, but they're keeping the Russians away from it. So they're being cagey about it. They're not telling us why they're being so tight-lipped about it. So they have, and they explain it. Um, it's, there was one big explosion, and then there was a, another one hours later. So two separate explosions. It happened again. Underwater explosions farther off the northeastern coast. The next morning, photographs showed enormous blossoms of methane bubbling from the surface. Nord Stream 1 and 2, severe loss of pressure. Now a month after the subsea explosions, Nord Stream pipelines in Binny Ash Waters, the leak has stopped. The first underwater images of the twisted metal and severe openings have been published, and three countries have investigations underway. But they go on. So Denmark, Germany, and Sweden have launched separate investigations into the leaks. Denmark and Sweden because the explosions occurred in waters that were within their so-called exclusive economic zones, and Germany because that is where the pipelines terminate. In a letter to the UN Security Council, three days after the incident, Denmark and Sweden said they believed that several hundred kilograms of explosives had been used to damage the pipes, each of which measures more than three and a half feet in diameter and is made from steel encased in weighted concrete. All three countries are refusing to release any information. <laughs> Okay, we're not telling you. We can't tell you any of this. All three countries are refusing to release any information, and they're also and Russia is also saying, uh, you know, we're not we're we're being told that we we um that we can't. Uh, what does Russia say? Russian officials have complained that they have been blocked from investigating the explosion. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov accused the Europeans of conducting the investigation secretively without Moscow's involvement. According to statements we're hearing from Germany, from France, and from Denmark, the investigation was set up inherently to put blame on Russia, Mr. Peskov says. As well as these three countries that are doing their own investigation, Finland has said, we can fix it, though. We can start working on it. We think it would be just a few months. Um, and we have not seen the corrosion that would be expected if the pipes were not fixable. It seems like they are still bright and shiny, so... We're going to get to work on that. Yeah, the good news is it's so deep in the water that there's no oxygen down there. So the oxidation that you would normally see, the rusting of these pipes is not happening because it's so deep. So good. They're nice and shiny. They can get them up and running again in a few months so that Russia can go and bomb them again. Just joking. Of course, we know who did it. Um, so well, this is, the, and, and speaking of Russia bombing them, though, this is one of those things where, like, if, if you want to know when they're lying to you, I mean, basically, if they're speaking, they're probably lying to you. But when they when they say like Russia definitely did this, but we can't tell you who did it, <laughs> right? That right there, like like th right. which is it? You know, they're they're like we definitely know who did this. We're right. not going to tell you who it was. It was Russia. But we're not going to let you know. And these three countries that I mean, are saying on. that they're doing an investigation, they want to ac accuse what Russia. They are Western aligned. Germany is the West. So. Um, you yeah, know, show us. They would say something. Show yeah. us. Yeah, if it's, it's if point. it's Russia, then just show us. But they won't because they we know exactly who it is. So they they can't do that. And they're being told not to do it, right? So you know, all it takes is a call from the Pentagon. Do not release that. You know, Lloyd Austin. Do not, under any circumstances, release that information. Okay, we've got more pipelines to bomb, and we're going to use the same concrete explosives that we just used. So we don't want that getting around.